I'd la now like to do the muscles of the forearm and I'll just do the anterior compartment in this short video. I always like students to find landmarks. It helps them to identify the muscles better. And I always tell them to start with this muscle right here. It's called the pronator teres and its origin is on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and it inserts on the lateral part of the radius and it pronates and flexes the forearm. The reason why I tell students to start with the pronator is because I think P for pronator and P for point. And I, I think the pronator looks like it's pointing at this muscle right here, which is a muscle from the posterior compartment, but yet we can see it on the anterior side. It is an extensor muscle, so it really is coming from the posterior side, but yet on the cat we see it on the anterior portion of the forearm. This muscle that the pronator is pointing to is the extensor carpi radialis. Going from the pronator across to cover the other three le, uh, muscles of the flexor group, we have this very long strappy muscle and this muscle that's in between this long strappy muscle called the palmaris longus, this muscle in the middle between the pronator teres and palmaris longus, this is the flexor carpi radialis. The flexor carpi radialis has its origin again on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts on the base of the second and third metacarpals. Its action is to flex the wrist and abduct the hand. Going back to this long strappy muscle here, the palmaris longus, it too has its origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and it inserts on the palmar aponeurosis. Its action is to tense the skin and fascia of the palm, and it is a weak flexor of the wrist. Going past the palmaris longus, this muscle here is the flexor carpi ulnaris. It has its origin, again, on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts on the pisiform and hamate and fifth metacarpal and its action is to flex the wrist and adduct the hand.